Let's talk about corneal staining with ortho K. So usually with ortho K, we don't see any degree of corneal staining. You're gonna see a cornea, like the image on the left-hand side, where there's no staining, good ocular surface quality. We do sometimes see other staining that can be caused from poor insertion and removal techniques, solution toxicities, ocular surface conditions, and it may be mild and central, like you see in the middle image here, or it may be more significant and need to be lead to discontinuation. Um, so this is how we should uh, deal with the various types of staining that we see. If there's poor insertion and either debris builds up under the contact lens for so the, the corneal debris, or if there's a trapped air bubble, then we tend to see this kind of larger punctate pattern. So the, the, the punctate stains are, are softer and they're diffuse and spread out a bit more. Patients are generally asymptomatic and their vision may be poorer depending on whether it's been a, a dimple, veil, dimple veil from a bubble um, or whether it's uh, just very shallow from, from debris. You can see that the, the kind of pattern of staining that we see here kind of matches the, the, the bubble pattern that's caused underneath a, a contact lens. So in this type of staining, where it's punctate stain and spread out, we tend to want to coach insertion and removal and also change our patients to using a drop like OcuDry 0.3, which is a preservative-free lubricating drop for, for lens insertion. Essentially, if we see a more confluent stain like we've got here, where there's this patch of grouped up staining in the, the corneal centre, then this is when we need to, to take action. This patient will usually have symptoms, they'll have discomfort when they remove the lens, a uh, foreign body sensation, and this will cause stromal flare visible at your slit lamp assessment, and it will also be persistent even towards the end of the day. This is where you need to discontinue wear and increase the, the sag of the lens that you're fitting. This will also be revealed in topography. You quite often will see a very small, defined central, so high spot, this area here. Now this differs from a, a central island, which is usually caused when there's actually too much gap between or too much sag of the, the contact lens, and we, we tend to get an undercorrection, but this small defined stain will be visible on your tangential curvature standard scale image. Moving away from the central cornea, if we look towards the corneal periphery, we quite often, particularly at the start of ortho -key wear, um, but we can see it long term, see this, this imprint that we're seeing. And this is from the peripheral zones of the lens, not causing any stain so much on the cornea, but it's causing a, a dent in the cornea. And then the tear film, of course, fills in those dents and it's the difference in thickness that shows up with the fluorine. Patients will be asymptomatic with this. And of course, in this area of the cornea is where the lens and the cornea should be aligning. So there, should, there shouldn't be any reason for getting any damage to the corneal epithelium there because the, the two surfaces should be quite parallel. This can be tolerated, but also we want to just make sure that we're, we're maintaining as good a healthy an ocular surface as we can. In this image, you can see that this patient has a, they have quite dry eyes and the, the corneal imprint is quite visible and there's also some of the, the biofilm staining centrally with this patient. So improving the patient's ocular surface with drops during the day um, and lid, uh, lid massage and lid hygiene MGD management is the, is the appropriate action. If we see in the mid-peripheral area staining, like we see here where the yellow arrow is, then this is usually caused by some debris underneath the contact lens or by adhesion between the lens and the corneal epithelium. Again, it tends to be asymptomatic unless it was quite, uh, quite marked staining where they probably have foreign body sensation. And this is treated again with ocular surface with OcuDry 0.3 or preservative free drops and also management during the day. This is possibly uh, an indication that patient has a, a dry eye in the normal daytime environment and needs to be managed. Going beyond the edge of the contact lens, you can see here where the yellow is marking. Now this, this patient may be symptomatic with, with symptoms of dry eye, in which case we're going to manage the, the dryness as we would do with a, a non-contact lens wearer. This may also be caused from poor insertion and, and removal techniques. It may be that the patient is scratching their eye to a degree when they're inserting or removing the lens. So coaching I and R and managing the, the dry eye 
with preservative food drops. Looking onto the conjunctiva and beyond the cornea, we quite often can see, in this case, we can see this patient has, they have history of lid issues. You can see the notch in the lid here caused by an old meibomian gland cyst. But this patient has just general diffuse staining on the conjunctiva. So at this point, we want to move them onto preservative-free solutions and, uh, and ma uh, maintenance of a dry eye during the day. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the video. Check out the other videos in this series. And thanks for watching.